osteoporosis, weakening of the bone, doesn't it just naturally happen as we age? Well, to some degree, yes. We break down, no doubt about it. There are many factors. As we age, we produce more stress hormones, cortisol, less anabolic hormones. So stress hormones like cortisol are going to be catabolic. It breaks us down, bone and musculature. So that's why as we age, men have a tendency to have thinner muscles. You kind of begin to shrink. Your bone mass can diminish. Uh, you can even lose stature uh, and height. Women are susceptible to many of the same issues and a little easier often for women to add a little more adipose or fat tissue. But the key theme is as we age, there's a process that takes place. We produce more inflammatory proteins as the natural process of aging. We produce less of the hormones that combat that. So, <clears throat> Joe, what you're saying is I'm doomed and I'm destined. No, not necessarily. That's what we're all about how are you proactive? How can you intervene scientifically, not pie in the sky, not snake oil, some black salve, just do this stuff from the Amazon River Basin. No, 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 no. Fundamentally, what are things that play into damaging your bones, softening your bones? So as we go on this little ride, make sure that you um, don't become overwhelmed by the volume and number of approaches but that you take it in, it's a synergism and a blend. For some of you, some of these factors might be more of a problem. You might have a significant hormonal issue. You might have a significant decline for years in your vitamin D levels. Maybe for some of you, you've had a really poor diet. You don't eat enough yellows and oranges and greens in your diet. Maybe for some of you, you've just had a lot of risk factors. I did all these other things, but I smoked and I drank and I loved my sodas for years. I don't know. <clears throat> and this is not even all encompassing. We're, you know, we, we've counseled and, and Josiah and our team and Mary and Tyler about making these things condensed so that you can get some data from us, but I can't make all these other things go away. So I'm, I'm picking about seven of the most highly visible doesn't mean there aren't others. So just take it in. I think this will bless you, and I think it will help you. Preventatively, you know, we, we, we've discussed, you know, men's prostate health and what a man needs to do in his 30s and 40s to prevent problems in his 60s and 70s to avoid surgery. You women in particular, you're in your 30s and 40s. Don't dismiss the fact that you're not a candidate for this probably over the next 20 to 30 years if you aren't aware of some of these issues. So let's go. Thanks for being with us and tuning in. Alkalinize. Alkalinize your diet. We've done a lot on this. We actually have teachings on this. We have live streams on this that you can go and view in 15 minutes legitimately how to alkalinize your diet. Why does it play? Because an acid-forming diet, an acid-ash residue, or a diet that has a lot of whites, a lot of refines, that is minimal in good fats, minimal in antioxidants from fruits and vegetables, puts you in a very acidic state, a breakdown state. Not only does it open up the door and increase the risk for disease in general, but it absolutely will diminish bone structure and function over time. So alkalinizing the diet, there's literature on the website, there's teaching, that's where you need to go. This is not going to be detail, this is going to be bullet points as to what plays. I believe this is number one on the list. I think number two on the list are the risk factors. If you smoke, you need to reconsider. If you drink alcohol regularly, you need to reconsider. Right? First of all, women, um, you need to reconsider because breast cancer risks go higher. Contrary to what you see in the literature, I need to drink wine, it's good for me. Look, alcohol increases breast cancer risks, and it certainly diminishes bone health. Men, uh, drink too much beer. Drink a lot of wine and beer, and your enlargement of the prostate gland is pretty much right around the bend, especially beer. So both of you, women and men, consider what you're doing. Sodas, a death knell for the bones. Goodness gracious, why? It acidifies you. Phosphoric acid acidifies you. It melts your bones, quite frankly. If you, if you drink pop, as we would say here in western Pennsylvania, if you drink sodas, bad news. Um, stress, goodness gracious, stress, what does it do? High cortisol output, usually eventually 
followed by lowered DHEA levels, catabolic, breaks you down, anabolic, maintains and builds bone and muscle. So notice I got an arrow going up on the catabolic side, break down. And then what generally happens, long-term stress, the DHEA, the anabolic types of hormones that we produce, diminish, I begin to break down. So now I've got this breaking down and I'm not building up. So the musculature has a tendency to reduce and shrink. Bones reduce and shrink. Long-term stress. Well, what can I do? I have stress. I can't help it. My work, my job. I hear you. I, we all hear you. Whether you have young children at home that don't sleep, or maybe you have issues of health, maybe you have problems with a loved one, you might be a caregiver, we all have stress. What are you doing to combat it? Do you read your scripture? Do you read a psalm? You say, well, you're going to preach at me. I'm not going to preach at you. I'm just going to tell you that there's a way to try to combat and deal with a lot of the stressors. Stress plays big into this. Do you exercise regularly? Do you take a long walk to try to diminish some of the stressors? Clear your head. Pray. I think that managing stress is critical. Medications. Goodness gracious, if you listen to our radio show, if you don't, you need to begin to. But we talk about meds, unfortunately, that diminish bone health. Uh, acid blockers, clearly. The, the, the um, Prilosex and Nexiums and all, all that whole family of Pantosoprol, Esomeprazole, all these medications, they diminish absorption of minerals. Hypomagnesia, that diminishes your magnesium absorption. Magnesium is as important as you will see to bone health as calcium or the other minerals. Medications. You could have been on steroids over a long period of time or maybe had chronic sinus infections or maybe some exacerbations of asthma and you've had to use inhalers of steroids or oral steroids that create HPA axis a suppression. Soften your bones. So it could be medications, it could be stress, or it could be a combination of all of the above. The key here is how do I reduce them? Which ones can I control? Can I control my stress? No. Can I control smoking, alcohol, and sodas, and the types of medications? Yes, you sure can. You sure can. Sometimes I can't always control this, but I can do things to mitigate its potential damage in my body. Why? Because if I manage even deep breathing... I can diminish some of my cortisol levels. Exercise begins to reverse this trend, and I can increase my DHEA levels. I can begin to reduce my cortisol levels, and I don't have as much catabolism or breakdown of bone. Does that mean I've got to do every single one of thing, these things perfect? I've got to eat the perfect alkaline diet. Then I've got to test my urinary pH in the morning, and then I've got to get rid of all the... And then I got... And then, 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 no. But that's why I've given you the highlights, the big guys, seven or so, begin to modify some of these. And you will, without question, do not buy the fact that you're just destined to have bone health issues. Don't, don't buy that. Don't buy it. Certainly some of you do have a smaller body frame. You're at higher risk. I got you. I hear you. I'm in agreement. You could have some genetic tendencies. No doubt. Bloodline. No doubt, but you can modify many of them via what you do, okay? First morning urinary pH, what's that all about? We have a, a, a hydrion paper, pH paper, that I believe if you already are in osteoporosis or osteopenia, which is borderline, you're on your way to um, a porosis state, you should be testing your first morning urinary pH, and you will tell whether or not you are alkaline enough or if you're too acidic. So I've had folks, we've had a lot of calls lately on alkaline forming water units. We discussed this and talked about this on the radio show 15, 17 years ago. In particular, units called Kangen units, K-A-N-G, I believe, E-N, a Japanese product that um, they designed an alkaline forming water unit. They're awesome, actually. And I had this one gal call and say, well, I, I turn it up as far as it can go. Is that bad for me? Yeah, that's not, you shouldn't do that. The point is not to make your pH 8 plus, for goodness sake. That's, 
That's alkalosis. That's dangerous. What we want to do is try to keep you around 7, which is technically not alkalinity. It's neutrality. Okay? So get counsel. That's why we do the radio show. Call in. Send us emails. Joyce Gibb, our nurse practitioner. We have a team that responds. We, we have Facebook. Go to our Facebook page. Interact with us, and we'll try to answer them. I, I, we can't do consultations. You, know, you, can't, you can't send me all your blood work and your whole history, and then expect me to answer it in a, in a line or two. That's not going to happen. But you've got some nice, generic, kind of to-the-point questions. We'd love to interact with you. Resistance training is critical. Say, Joe, I don't exercise. I don't have time. Well, you can go to the sporting goods store and buy some bands and begin with the lowest tension, and we have a live stream. Dante, my youngest son, went through a whole teaching on this, how to do some things that help you even on your knees things that won't hurt you won't get hurt and what are you doing you're creating resistance when you create a demand and resistance on the musculature and on the bone the demand is created by your brain it dictates back bone resorption don't break it down we need to build it because we have a greater demand okay um i always say you, you know you won't see unless he has a disease state Pagets or whatever. You will never see a bodybuilder or a weightlifter or someone that trains pretty intensely suffer from osteoporosis unless they have some underlying disease or metabolic disease with hormone or something that is very dramatically wrong. All things kind of being equal, if you exercise and you do resistance training, you walk, you use some bands, pulling, pushing, and above your head, the potential for you to develop osteoporosis, women and men, is greatly diminished. Okay, evaluate your hormone levels. We've got to know what your testosterone and your DHEA and your progesterone, et cetera, levels on. We do urinary and saliva testing. Um, that needs to be a part of it. Have you ever done a 25-OHD level, a vitamin D level? If you haven't, that's a, that's a major no-no. You say, I have. My doctor said it's normal. Well, the range runs from 30 to 100 on the scale. So if you're 32, does that mean you're normal? No. Mm -mm. What, what, what should you be? Well, ideally, 50 to 60 nanograms. That's the range. That's the ideals. I'm even going to say I, I push it up higher, 60 to 70, and I got literature to support me on that, and I have for a long time, probably 14 years, 15 years. But um, the key is... What is it? Have you had one done? Okay, antioxidant in foods in your diet. Do, do you eat? You know, there's literature that just shows women that eat more yellow and orange, cryptoxanthines, zeaxanthines, lutines. They eat reds, orange, and yellows in their diet, squash and yam and so on. Cryptoxanthines, zeaxanthines, that, that, that carotenoid family. Do you realize those alone are shown to reduce osteoporosis in women. Why? Because they have powerful antioxidants. They reduce oxidative damage and trauma. They encourage repair. We've discussed this even with men with prostate health. It encourages repair and it discourages breakdown of bodily tissue. So just something as simple as getting oranges and yellows and greens and reds into your diet. Foods, not dyes. Foods, by the way, real foods, big, big benefit. All right, what about from a supplemental standpoint as we close this? We have a couple of options. We have bone essentials. We have osteo essentials plus. This is kind of our coup de gras. This is our high end uh, version and there's a reason and I'm not going to be able to for sake of time here get into all of the components but I'm just going to go over them to make sure I cover them all. Magnesium. Magnesium is a huge cofactor, just as important to bone health as calcium. Number two, strontium stimulates, we have a little bit of strontium in here, strontium stimulates osteophytes, osteoblasts, which are, osteophytes are baby um, cells that are in, involved in building bone. Vitamin K, vitamin K2 in particular, very important for osteocalcin synthesis, having everything to do with bone. So you will notice I didn't mention yet calcium per se. 
And because calcium is not the main player in this, calcium mag combinations really are, but it's about a synergism of nutrients. It is about magnesium as well as calcium. It is about strontium and boron. It is about silicon. Is it about K2 and K1? I mean, you getting my drift here? I mean, it's, it's, it's about a synergism of nutrients. Iodine. Iodine, iodine. We just did a little blog post and a little thing on Facebook, and I just talked a little bit about, well, I was stunned at how much reaction we received on that, about the importance of iodine with breast health in women and bone health and thyroid health, and it got a ton of hits because why? Because this is demonized in medicine. This is you're told this is bad. They'll never take iodine. Really? Now, I don't agree with some natural practitioners that they have you doing 50 milligrams a day. I see no place for that. But most of us are iodine deficient. Huge impact on bone health, osteopenia, osteoporosis. Copper is critical. Next live stream, yes, next live stream, iodine. It's awesome because I think because for years it was so demonized, folks didn't understand it. And now when I start talking about its role in human health, people are like, well, what are you talking about? Like, I, I never knew that. I've always thought that iodine was something that was not good for you. I've, have, I've heard that you should never take it because it damages your, your, your thyroid. Whoa. Whoa. Iodine is critical for you to even make thyroid hormone. There's a balance here. We've kind of eschewed it. We've put it to the side. Not wise. Manganese. In here is manganese. Iodine, strontium, vanadium, zinc, boron, K2, K1. But why manganese? Do you know that manganese is critical to bone mineralization and connective tissue formation? Before you make bone, you're going to make cartilage. You're going to make collagen. Manganese is critical to that. There's a lot more to talk about with osteoporosis. You want some more help. You want more additional help. You need to call the off-air toll-free number. Go to our website. Send us an email. Set up a consultation time. We have other more extensive teachings on osteoporosis. This is the quick and the skinny of a very complicated subject that is pretty much just treated with pharmacology and pharmaceuticals today in the world of medicine. And I don't know that that is completely necessary when you understand this. Don't be overwhelmed by the number of approaches. Um, know that you've got to do a little bit of all of them or a good bit of some of them. And you're going to end up on the plus side not the minus side. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. We've got plenty more of these uh, little teachings coming, coming. So tell your friends about them. Refer them to the page. I think they'll be blessed and they will be helped. Blessings to you. Thanks for tuning in.